guys welcome back to my channel um make sure you subscribe and like this video today we're going to be reading a musical fairy tale adventure with sarah and zayan and today we have a new mascot um her name is skylar he she is going to be watching us this whole book okay let's get on with the book um this book was made by me and my mum and this is the um our version so you can get the better version on amazon and let's get on with the story Zayan woke up to a beautiful sunny day. Jumping out of bed, he ran to Sarah's room. Come on, come on. Do you remember what day it is? Saturday, groaned the sleepy and slightly grumpy Sarah. Now go away and let me sleep. Pulling the covers off his sister, Zayan ran downstairs singing, Musical Instruments Day, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to get the drums before you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah got out of bed as fast as she could and hardly touching the ground, she ran past Zayn singing, No, you won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mum was already in the living room building up the instrument. Dad had promised if they had done well in school that year, he would buy them a band set. There were drums, guitar, keyboard and microphone. Now, rem now remember, said Mum, absolutely no fighting over these and they will live in the garage for you to use dad moved all the instruments to the garage while the kids were having their breakfast for breakfast there was a chocolate spread sandwich for sarah and a fruit and toast for zayan after their breakfast zayan and sarah went to the garage to get the instruments sarah went straight for the guitar because she loves the sound that it makes. Zayan went straight for the drums. There was a note attached to the drums. Look, what's that? said Zayan. It looks like music instructions for the drums and guitar. Let's try it, replied Sarah. Use these notes to play a tune and an adventure will be yours very soon. Before they knew it, the garage started spinning around them. Colours came from every direction, music notes flying around their heads. The world spun faster and faster. Zayn grabbed Sarah and Sarah grabbed Midnight and they closed their eyes until everything stopped. Suddenly, they found themselves in a field in different clothes. Midnight, their cat, was there too. Oh my, she said. I feel super dizzy. Midnight, said Zayan. You can talk. The children in Midnight stared at each other for what felt like ages. A voice behind startled them. Hello, I am Prince Rizzo. I am looking for Princess Mycena's voice. Have you seen it? Our Queen Sophie Bubble zapped it as a consequence for being naughty this morning. She can have it back now if we can find it. Last time it took us all day and we finally found it in the colour red of the rainbow. By the way, who are you? I haven't seen you around here before. Nice to meet you, Um. I am Sora, and these two are Zayan and Midnight. We have no idea where where we are or how we got here. This is Paradise Valley, said Prince Rizzle. My sister woke up in not a not so good mood and was super cheeky to Mum and Dad. Zayan and Midnight giggled, saying, "Oh, we know someone like that." Hey, protested Sora. You can help us find the voice bubble. If you like, then I can help you figure out how you got here and how to get home. Come on, I'll take you to the princess. She's over near to the... She's over next to the river with Brandon Bear. Brandon and Princess Messina were fishing in the hope of finding the voice bubble, but all they could find were fish. They continued on and headed down 
down river to find Serena. She is the local mermaid and knows waters very well, so she, so would know where the best places to look are. Serena had a good idea. Uh, Serena had a good swim around, checking under rocks and in all the holes. I can't find anything here either," she said. "Dear Princess, you really must learn your lesson. This is the third time you, this month, your mother has hidden your voice from you," she added with a smile. After spending some time at the river, they decided to head into the woods. Owl no, normally knows everything that goes on there, so he would know if there was a voice bubble anywhere near," said Prince Rizzle. <coughs> well, well, well! Look who we have here! It's the princess again! Don't tell me the queen has hidden your voice. Oh, that's right! You can't tell me anything. Owl almost fell off his branch, laughing at his own joke. Midnight whispered to Sora and Zayn, "You thought me talking was strange. So far, we have spoken to a bear, a mermaid, and now an owl that is drinking a mug, a mug of hot chocolate and cracking awful jokes." Hush," said Sora. "We don't want them to think we're rude. Besides, we need to figure out how to get home, and maybe helping Prince Rizzle." And Princess Maysina, we can find a way back. In a low voice, Zayn said, "I'm not sure. I want to go home. Too soon. This is amazing. There have been no bubbles flying by here today. Maybe the Queen is getting better at hiding your voice from your princess." Owl turned round and said, "Now, if you don't mind, I am busy." Midnight and the children started walking back to the castle through the caves when Flame the dragon flew by. Ah! Ah! Panicked Zayn, running behind his sister. Prince Rizzle assured them that the dragon was a friend. Phew! Said Midnight. For a moment, I was. For a moment there, I thought we were all barbecue. New friends? Asked Flame. It's so nice to see some. New faces round here. If you are looking for a voice bubble, then one shot past me earlier while I was in my cave. I'm not sure where it went after that, but I feel, but feel free to have a look around. Thank you, Flame," said Prince Rizzle. "Ooh, how exciting!" said Sara. "Let's go." In the cave, they bumped into Jack. He was a boy who lived there with Flame. He lost his parents a few years ago, a few years back. So Flame looks after him now. It was starting to get late, and the day was turning into night. We'll need to hurry," said Midnight. "Your parents will be getting very worried about you, and where you are." "You're right," said Sara. Jack was jumping from rock to rock with excitement. When he saw everyone, wow! I have never seen a real person from the outside world before. I have heard many stories, but never thought I would see it, ever see any. You know where they come from? Asked Prince Rizzle, looking puzzled. My father told me about the outside world. He had friends from there. An old man called Uncle Bill, with one blue eye and one brown eye, who used who used to visit him many. Many times over the years, Sarah looked slightly shocked as she said, "That was our grandfather. He would tell us stories of different worlds he visited and adventures. We all thought he was just going a little crazy." Just then, Princess Maysina started jumping and stamping her feet and pointing at her throat. Prince Rose said, "Okay, okay, we are go. We are going. Calm down," Jack said. Jack said he saw a voice bubble head along the cave and out the other side. Be care, be careful though, as it is very slippy at the far end. The children in midnight continued on through the cave. Just then, as they reached the end, Princess Maysina grabbed 
Sara and started pointing frantically. A glimmer of light, a glimmer of bright light, was swishing and swooshing about. That's it, Carl cried. Prince Rizzle. Midnight ran toward it. I will get it, she meowed as she took a massive jump. The voice bubble darted past her. She didn't realise that there was something holding on to it. It turned out to be Sprinter. She was the fastest animal in Paradise Valley. Both animals fell to the ground and rolled until a tree stump stopped them. Fantastic, said Sprinter. You sure can jump very high. Well, that's that was a new one for me, said Midnight. I never knew I could jump that high, to be honest. I had no idea squirrels were that fast either. Sprinter went over and handed the bubble to the princess. Here you are, dear princess, the queen said, that it won't pop this time until you take it back to her, and she will pop it herself. Now you're all better hurry as it is getting dark and the forest is not a great place to be at night prince rizzle led them all on towards the castle finally they entered and the queen was waiting the voice bubble shot out of princess Mycena's hand and started flying away from them the children chased after it Bloop! it landed straight in a fishbowl Sara ran over and grabbed it out of the fishbowl before it could take off again and gave it to the princess. Children, <coughs> it took you longer than I thought it would this time. Give me the bubble, Maysina. The princess gave the bubble to her mother and as the queen touched it, the bubble popped and the princess squealed with delight. I'm sorry, mother, honestly. I'll be super good from now on, <coughs> as even uh, I am getting tired of having to spend my day searching for my voice. Now, said the queen, let me see you moving over to the children. She bent down. You must be sorry and saying, your grandfather was a very dear friend of the king and I. He would always mention you both on his visits. So I'm very glad you find your way here. You can stay the night if you wish. Thank you for the offer, your majesty, said Sara. We really need to get home, but we have no idea how we got here and have, and so have no idea how to get back. Can you help us? Don't worry, your pretty little... Don't worry, your pretty little head, my dear. It is easy. I will send you down to Taffy. She will whip you up a tune to get you home in no time. Princess Mycena ran over to Sara and Zayan. Oh, please come back soon. I didn't have time to get to know you properly. And I would love to, to, to have you as a special friend. You helped us when you didn't even know us. With that, she smiled and hugged them both. Taffy was a fairy who lived in the castle. She explained that the musical notes they played were magical notes to Paradise Valley that were m many different tunes for different adventures. Their grandfather had asked them her to help them find their way here. He wanted to let them see that they are adventure there are adventures to be had even after he had gone. She took a flute and played the same tune they played in the garage. Before they knew it, everything was spinning again. When it all stopped, they found themselves back in the garage exactly the same time had left they had left it. Midnight rubbed against Zayan's leg, purring. Oh, it looks like Midnight has gone back to her normal self, too. Come on, Sara. Come on, Sara said. That's enough adventure for one day. Her grandfather wasn't crazy after all. But shh, don't tell Mum and Dad. This is our little secret. As they closed the garage door and headed back to, into the house, there were 
they were happily wondering where their next adventure will take them. The end. Until the next adventure. I hope you all liked that story. So make sure you all subscribe and give this a huge thumbs up. Love you all. Bye.